There are two basic categories of light fixtures. We have open face lights and Fresnels. Well, open face lights have an exposed bulb that's just behind a protective metal screen. Whereas Fresnels have the bulb behind a focusing lens that lets you flood or spot focus the lens onto your subject. Now, it's important to note is that spotting or flooding your light does not actually affect the softness of the light. Rather, how much of the light is being spread from the light source. Spotting and flooding a Fresnel lens also affects the brightness of your light on your subject. Well, to demonstrate, I set up a LEDGO D1200 and I set it to flood mode, so we have the widest possible dispersion. And at a distance of about six feet away from my seamless background, my light meter is reading an F8. But watch what happens when I change my light from flood to spot. My light meter is now reading an F22. And that's a three f-stop difference, which means that the light fixture set to spot is eight times brighter in that hotspot than it is when it's set to flood mode. Notice how much wider of an area we're able to cover, though, when the light is in flood mode. And in both cases, this is why a Fresnel lens is preferable to the open face light. Notice how smooth the light falls off from the center hotspot into darkness. I'm lighting Jenny with my Nanlite Forza 500. That is a Fresnel lens, but the lens is focused into spot configuration. Now, because the light rays are focused onto Jenny, I'm getting about two stops brighter light than if I were to flood it. Notice specifically the shadows on her face. They are fairly sharp and defined, not because the light is set to spot, but because the light generating area is still relatively small. So, watch what happens when I rotate my Fresnel and actually move the Fresnel lens closer to the light bulb. It's actually increasing the spread of the light, and in doing so, it's reducing the brightness of light because that light is no longer focused on one small area. But again, take a look at the shadows. Just because we have our Fresnel lens set to flood isn't making the light any softer. It's simply increasing the spread of the light. And that is the power of a Fresnel lens. One of the reasons why Fresnels create such a beautiful light is because of how the lens focuses the light. Regardless of whether you're in spot or flood mode, the light actually has a natural fall off along the edges that you could use to your advantage. So let's say instead of directly focusing my light onto Jenny, I'm instead going to simply tilt it down a little bit so that she's falling into the fall off of the light. And notice what a beautiful, soft, smooth transition this is creating. That's very, very flattering. And it allows me to really control the quality of the light without having to bring in a flag or a net or a silk. Now, let's say I were to spot my light. So I'm gonna rotate the Fresnel lens so the lens is farther away from the light bulb, focusing my light you'll notice that I still have a very nice natural transition. And I can use this to really shape and position my light wherever I want and take advantage of some of that really nice fall off. And this is one big benefit that you'll find with a Fresnel lens over a traditional open face light, is that that Fresnel lens gives you such a beautiful fall off around the outer perimeter of the light that you can really use it to shape the look of your shot. Another technique I like to use whenever I'm lighting my talent is to double stack the key lights. So for my first key light, I have a large soft light source that's filling in the shadows and creating a really nice aesthetically pleasing look. Soft wraparound, soft shadows. But it's still relatively flat. So what I'm going to do is introduce my second key light, which is the Fresnel. And this is going to illuminate just Jenny's eyes and her face. So it really draws the audience's eyes to her face while retaining the softness of the initial soft light. All right, guys, there you have it. A few techniques to help you improve your film skills. Now, if you really want to improve the quality of your productions, I'll take you much deeper into the entire filmmaking process in the paid course at Film Skills Unlimited, where I partnered with Aerie, Audio Technica, Panavision, Matthew Studio Equipment, Ledgo, and Kinoflow to produce an online training curriculum so complete that over 115 film schools, universities, and film commissions use my program. 
Plus, I sat down with over 70 Academy Award and Emmy-winning filmmakers who reveal the techniques they use to produce the biggest TV shows and movies ever made. So join over 20,000 filmmakers and learn how to write better screenplays, become a more effective director on set, master advanced cinematography techniques, unlock the full capabilities of your camera and lens, improve your shots with Hollywood lighting techniques, learn how to record audio, design sets, edit, and much more. And as a special bonus, I've also negotiated special discounts on software and gear just for Film Skills members. And as a member, you also have exclusive access to hundreds of projects and exercises to practice and hone your skills. Plus, nearly 2,000 pages of my illustrated companion guides, personal mentoring, job shadows, and much more. So check out filmskills.com for more information. And by the way, you're also invited to join my free one-hour filmmaking course where I share my top 10 secrets to achieving a professional look that helped me grow a career shooting in over 35 countries for top studios and brands. So check out the link below to register for my free one-hour filmmaking course and learn how to become a better filmmaker at Film Skills, the online film school built by filmmakers for filmmakers. Hey.